Joining us now to talk about the recent surge of COVID-19 is Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, the founder of Simcoe, Illinois. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Always good to be with you. Good morning. Um, is there enough data on the need for a booster? There is a professor from the University of Chicago today in the Washington Post writing that we really should wait for that and in the meantime use the, these vaccines for countries that can't afford them. Well, at the risk of positing a townie versus gowny type of conversation, I think that the data comes out slowly enough that if you see trends, our best course of action is to act rapidly. Uh, we don't need to be in the midst of the wave, the next wave, and await data coming out before we act in the direction in which we know mm -hmm. this is headed. There's data that says that younger children are spreading the virus faster than older children. Those vaccines still not available to kids under the age of 12. Do we know when that might happen and how you might convince parents that it's okay to vaccinate young children? Well, to their credit, parents have a long history of being okay with vaccines. I just think that the safety data needs to come out and present it in a way that's understandable. That's what parents want, and I think that if we are fair and give them what they need, they will respond. I do think that caution is the better course of action in terms of producing vaccines. Kids are not little adults. You have to redo what's been done. You have to come up with the correct doses. You have to know what the duration needs to be between vaccines. You have to have safety profiles. The better course of action here is really to be diligent and to make sure that when vaccinations are available to kids, that we can say with 100% certainty or close to it that it's going to be okay. And in the meantime, there are things that can be done. Remember, masking and social distancing are quite effective. So continuing to promote those is just where we have to be until the vaccines come through. And we're still not getting word when that might be for that age group, are we? Well, again, if you look logistically at how this plays out, um, data is going to be released by Pfizer, Moderna, and then J&J &J sometime um, at the end of September, perhaps. That's what's being projected. And along that time course, again, this is totally speculation, but I would think midwinter would actually be as soon as some of these things will become available hmm. for children that currently aren't able to be vaccinated. And anecdotally, I'm starting to see a lot of events start to be canceled because of Delta. Um, do you have a sense of when you turn the corner on that and can another um, variation emerge while we're still trying to battle that one? Well, we've turned the corner, but we've turned it in the wrong direction. Mm. See, before those events theoretically could have been done if you masked and engaged in social distancing and restricted those events to people who were vaccinated and or demonstrated to be negative. However, with the Delta variant, we now know that asymptomatic carriers is a thing. And if you have these large gatherings, even though no one may end up sick, hospitalized, or dying from them, they can then serve as the nexus for spread to many other individuals who are vulnerable, who then subsequently will develop disease. And some of what you've seen over the last couple of weeks in Chicago really makes you wonder whether that was the case in Lollapalooza with the rates now going in the direction in which they're going after what was a event that was pretty well organized and followed CDC guidelines as best as they could. Well, there is a free community health clinic on Saturday, August 28th from 10 until noon. You can get a COVID vaccine there. The link to register will be on our website, WGNTV.com. The information's on your screen. Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Be well. Thank you.